Hi students, this is Mr. Jason, and this week we'll be talking about the classification of cost or cost accounting in general. So this is probably the start of us covering through the entire Unit 3 materials. So please turn to page 21 of your Unit 3 textbook, the green one, before we start. Now, this chapter or this topic has two parts. So if you can look at the top of page 21, it's stated as classification of cost 1. That means there is a part 2 to this topic, which we'll talk about later in another class. So in this topic, we will examine a common method of classifying the cost of a business. So I will go through the lesson outline for today. So basically what I will do is I'll define cost and then I'll talk about cost behavior in terms of fixed, variable and mixed. And then I'll also try and differentiate for you what is the difference between cost and expense. Now, what is a cost? A cost is the economic sacrifice of resources for a particular purpose. So when a business sacrifices something for a certain use, then it is called a cost. It has monetary value. So let's say if the business manufactures a product like chairs, Timber that I use need to be purchased or manufactured, and therefore, that is a cost. Other ways a cost can be incurred is that, let's say, when businesses need to use electricity in the office, so to pay for the electricity bill, that will also incur cost. And cost behaves in different ways. So this is one of the ways we can classify cost according to its behavior how it varies with different levels of activity or production volume. So most of the time, activity or volume can be measured in terms of unit of production, how many hours the workers have worked, how many students have been enrolled, or any other measure that can measure a certain level of activity or volume. So there are three behaviors based on this, fixed, variable, and mixed. So let's talk about fixed cost first. Basically, how fixed costs behave is that it is constant in total. So within a relevant range of activity, which is basically where the same cost structure applies, a factory rent would be the same. No matter how many units of products the business produce, the business would still have to pay rent. So imagine this, if I produce zero units of a certain product, I would still need to pay rent for the factory. If I produce 100 units of a product, then the rent would still be unchanged, and therefore rent is a fixed cost. So other examples would be things like depreciation of machinery, uh, supervisor salary, rent of shop, insurance for delivery vehicle. So if you look at the two graphs shown in the slide, the first graph talks about the total fixed cost graph. So you can see that regardless of the activity level, the fixed costs remain unchanged. However, if you look at the second graph, this is a unit fixed cost graph. So this means that the more units you produce, the fixed cost per unit would reduce. So imagine this, if I pay $10,000 for rent and I produce one, product only. So I'm actually paying $10,000 of rent just for one product. But if I produce 10,000 products for a $10,000 rent, then it would be $1 of rent for each product. Does that make sense? So in this case, you can see that fixed cost per unit would reduce the more you produce. However, just make sure that all these must be within a relevant range. So let me give you an example. If I produce, let's say, 100,000 products, I may not be able to fit everything in one factory. So perhaps I need to rent a bigger factory, and that means that my rent would increase. So it doesn't mean that fixed costs would remain unchanged forever. It would be changed if your relevant range changes. In this case, the need to upgrade to a bigger factory. Let's talk about variable cost now. So variable cost changes in total as level of activity changes. So let's say I produce more, I would need to incur more cost for materials and these are called variable costs. However, the variable cost per unit does not change within the relevant range. So I'll show you examples of variable costs such as wages of 
machine operators, raw materials, cost of goods sold, commission to salespeople. So basically, if you look at these two graphs, the first graph talk about variable cost graph in total. And if I don't produce anything, let's say I don't produce any products, then I don't need to buy any raw materials, right? So it's zero variable cost. But the more products I produce, the more raw materials I need, and therefore my total variable cost would increase. However, if you look at the second graph, the unit variable cost graph, regardless of how many I produce, the variable cost per unit is still the same. I'll give you an example here. So let's say I produce a chair, and a chair would need a $10 worth of wood yeah, to produce one chair. So if I produce one chair, it's going to be $10 per wood right? for one chair. If I produce 100 chairs, it's still going to be $10 per chair because I need a $10 worth of wood for one chair still. So that means the unit variable cost does not change. But again, this is within a relevant range. So imagine this, talk about the chair example. If I were to produce 10,000 chairs, I may need 10,000 pieces of wood, right? But instead of paying $10 for each wood, perhaps the supplier gives me a discount because I'm buying a lot of wood from the supplier. And that's when relevant range would change. And therefore, the behavior of that graph or that cost would also change. But again, in that new relevant range, it would be the same behavior. So if you are to compare fixed and variable costs, there are two ways to compare it in total or per unit. So in total, fixed costs would remain unchanged or constant. Variable costs would increase yeah, as the activity level increases. If it's per unit, fixed costs would decrease as activity level increase. However, variable costs will remain the same per unit as activity level increases. All these must be within a relevant range. Now, mixed costs are also called semi-variable costs, and they have both fixed and variable elements. So let's talk about maintenance. Maintenance cost is something we need, right? So when we don't maintain anything, we still need to pay the workers something, right? So that it doesn't start from a zero. Therefore, if you look at the total mixed cost graph, the activity level, even though it may start at a zero, but your cost does not start at a zero, you have to pay a certain basic amount. But the more you need to maintain your equipment, let's say, you will need to pay more for maintenance costs. Similarly, for electricity bill, if let's say you don't use any electricity, you may still need to pay a certain fee or telephone bill. If you don't pay, if you don't use any telephone services, there might be a minimum charge. Yeah, but the more you use, the more it's charged to you. And that's an example of a mixed cost. Now, the thing about mixed cost is that we only need to know it in theory, but in calculations, we would focus more on fixed and variable. Now let's move on to the last part of this lesson. So how do I differentiate costs and expenses? Now, if you think about costs and expenses, they sound the same. Yeah, They are very similar in nature. It's just that costs may not be expenses, but all expenses are cost. Okay, let me explain why. Now, when your cost is unexpired, which means that you pay for something, but perhaps you prepay it. Let's say rent. I paid in advance, so I'm prepaying my rent. Now, we know that prepaid rent is not an expense, right? It is an asset in the balance sheet. It becomes an expense later when it is expired or when it is used or incurred. So then only will it be recorded as an expense. So really, the difference between cost and expense is a matter of timing. Costs may not be expenses because it is not time yet or it is not incurred yet, but all expenses are definitely cost. Alright, just to summarize, so I've defined cost for you, namely the business having to sacrifice something of a monetary value for a certain use. And then I've also showed for you the graphs for fixed variable and mixed cost in total and also per unit. And I've also differentiated cost and expense for you. That's all.